we begin our time of reflection this Ash Wednesday with a reading from Isaiah 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him were seraphim, each with six wings. With two wings they covered their faces, with two they covered their feet, and with two they were flying. And they were calling to each other, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. At the sound of their voices, the doorposts and thresholds shook, and the temple was filled with smoke. Woe to me, I cried, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. Then one of the seraphim flew to me with a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with tongues from the altar. With it he touched my mouth and said, See, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away, and your sin atoned for. So, as we come towards Lent, we often think of Lent as a time of giving something up. Maybe chocolates, maybe biscuits. Which is great, but um, it begs the question, why? Why is this something that we do year in, year out? Well, Lent is about a time for drawing closer to God, of being intentional about our walk with him. And so the giving up of chocolate or biscuits or, or whatever, or the picking up of a, a new practice, um, is uh, about focusing on that relationship with him. It could be giving up distractions, maybe as a kind of fasting for the want of that thing that drives us to push deeper into God, to reflect, to pray to God. But in and of itself, it is not an end, for it is that we want an encounter with God, an encounter such as Isaiah had in our reading, an encounter that is reflected through this 13th century prayer of Richard of Chichester. Most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. We want that encounter that draws us deeper into him. But as we heard in that reading, coming into the presence of God highlights where we fall, fall short of God's standards like a white shirt washed with coloured washing. Amongst all those other colours, it still looks white. Yet if it's held up to a new white, the contrast shows that it has dulled to a light grey colour. Isaiah saw the Lord, high and exalted, seated on a throne, and he cries, Woe to me, I am ruined, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King, the Lord Almighty. As we draw near to God, his holiness highlights our lack. So that is why we start Lent at Ash Wednesday, smearing our foreheads with ashes a traditional symbol of repentance and grief, but its shape too is highly significant. It is in the shape of a cross, and it is that cross that is all about God's forgiveness, what God did to pave that way for us to come to him. Recently, I was asked a question about Judas. Has he been forgiven? An academic question, perhaps, but I think it points to a deeper question. Are there sins that God can't forgive? Is there anything that we can do that can put us beyond God's forgiveness? And the short answer, no. Romans 8 says, 
There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. There is a, a lovely poem that tackles this question of what happened to Judas by Ruth Etchells. She's an Anglican theologian. And what I love about this poem is it illustrates just how far Jesus would go for us. As I read this, I'm going to put up a, a picture I found online, a, a portrait of Jesus. And looking at it, it, it just, to me, illustrates the grief that he felt. That he was torn apart, crumbling away with those silver coins clinging to him, weighing him down. In hell there grew a Judas tree, where Judas hanged and died, because he could not bear to see his master crucified. Our Lord descended into hell and found his Judas there, forever hanging on the tree, grown from his own despair. So Jesus cut his Judas down and took him in his arms, it was for this I came, he said, and not to do you harm. My father gave me twelve good men, and all of them I kept. Though one betrayed, and one denied, some fled, and others slept. In three days' time I must return to make the others glad. But first I had to come to hell, to share the death you had. My tree will grow in place of yours. Its roots lie here as well. There is no final victory without this soul from hell. So when we all condemn him as every traitor worst, remember that of all his men, our Lord forgave him first. And this reminds me of a passage from Matthew 18. What do you think? If a man owns a hundred sheep, and one of them wanders away, will he not leave the ninety-nine on the hills, and go and look for the one that wandered off? And if he finds it, truly I tell you, he is happier about that one sheep than about the ninety-nine that did not wander off. In the same way, your Father in heaven is not willing that any of these little ones should perish. Amen.
let us pray. Blessed are you, Lord our God, for you have created us and redeem us. You are ever ready to refresh and restore us. By you we are renewed and given the power to start again. Blessed are you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. We come as a church broken by divisions and factions and seeking your healing. Sometimes we have broken faith with you and with each other. We pray for all who strive to bring unity to the church. We ask your blessing upon churches that are struggling to survive or faced with violent oppression. Lord, we come to you. Only you can make us whole. We ask that we may be used as instruments of peace. We ask your blessings upon all who seek to heal the troubles between nations and peoples. We pray for all agencies of reconciliation. Lord, we come to you. Only you can make us whole. We give you thanks for our homes and our loved ones. We ask you to bless and protect them always. We pray for families that are suffering from broken relationships. We pray for all those with broken hopes and broken dreams. Lord, we come to you. Only you can make us whole. We give thanks that you are our strength and salvation. We remember all who are broken by illness. We pray for those struggling and all who feel that their lives are on the edge of collapse. We ask your blessing upon all who are no longer able to care for themselves. Lord, we come to you. Only you can make us whole. Lord, you make all things new, and you are the giver of life and life eternal. We ask you to bless our loved ones departed from us, that they may rejoice in the fullness of life. We commend them and ourselves to your unfailing love. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs> 